Let's talk about the other article or post that we have that I think is really good, and we're not really picking this apart uh, as much as the others. First and foremost, people think of fructose, they think of uh, high fructose corn syrup and and sugar and uh, fruit. Fruit is another source of fructose. And I'm always kind of confused because I'm always looking at fructose as either corn syrup or like eating an apple. And they're just two completely different things, but they both have fructose in it. So I find that to be a very important part of it. But this post talks about carbohydrates and the importance of carbohydrates that is found in a lot of fruits and vegetables, um, well, more sweet vegetables like uh, root vegetables and squashes. But there's something about the combination of this fructose with the other nutrients that come in these uh, nature's candies that people like to um, call them that have a very profound effect on the body. When it comes to sugar intake, I think there is demonizing sugar levels for consumption. So when you eat too much sugar, you're going to get fat is kind of the narrative that people have been uh, taught. And I feel like sugar is very important, but balancing your sugar levels and not being like, oh, I'm gonna have 25, like counting your sugar because you know calories in versus calories out isn't going to be very helpful for this um, comparison because on paper, a Coca-Cola and a couple of bananas have the same amount of sugar in it. So you're going to have the <laughs> same macronutrients. Yeah. So that's not really going to make a huge difference in what you're actually, um, what's happening with that inside your body. But one thing I like about this post, it talks about other things that have sugar that aren't as um, thought of like um, certain starchy carbs, like yeah. eating all sweet these potatoes, big, yams, things that people are eating a lot of when you think of the base of the food pyramid is breads and grains and uh, oats and that's a lot of people's base of their food consumption going to be it's going to be loaves of bread sandwiches um pastas and that has a ton of um of sugar and um not fructose but mm-hmm. it also has a lot of insulin that needs to be released when you consume these products and I think that the insulin conversation is very important here because when you have a really good source of fructose, like fruit, your body is going to um, help absorb that fruit with the insulin versus just using the insulin to um, have to deal with those really, really high, um, low nutrient, high sugar products. So that's where the uh, conversation starts to come into play for me that I find the most interesting. But I have been eating a lot of fruit as someone who cut out most sugar of my diet in a couple different experiments in my life. I have found a very important, um, noticeable impact on consuming more sugar that is from healthy sources like fructose from fruit. I mean, one of my things that I was thinking about when this article was, uh, when I read it, you sent it to me, was how it's talking about fructose not being bad per se. So we know blood glucose, but fructose is kind of like, I don't know. It's like a signaling type of loan. It's like, yes, you're intaking this fructose and it's sweet, but because it's not fully glucose. And of course in natural settings, it's not highly processed and not all of it's going to be absorbed insanely quickly it has to be converted by the liver to be glucose. So yeah, you're going to get some type of insulin hit, especially if it is something super processed with a lot of glucose, sucrose, anything like that. But the fructose has to hit the liver eventually. And when you have the high fructose corn syrup, that's hitting your liver so hard that it can develop things like fatty liver disease. But, of course, from natural sources, with all the other vitamins, the fiber, of course, to break up the amount you're able to absorb right away, that really normalizes things in a much better way. I don't think it should be demonized in the least, but people need to just realize the sourcing matters, the staying away from the ultra-processed stuff. And uh, for people like me or anyone else that has SHBG stuff with sex hormone binding globulin, it's like, dude, you need more of these starchy foods and uh, natural foods.